What's up guys? I hope you all are having a great day today. I am really looking forward to this video because this is probably one of my favorite topics to talk about on this channel and that of course is switching from console to PC gaming. Now I feel like this video is more relevant than ever because we are right about to see the launch of the brand new next generation consoles, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and people are going to be faced with a very difficult decision. Do you want to drop 500 bucks on the new next generation consoles or do you want to potentially upgrade to a gaming PC? And that's the entire point of this video. I'm going to go through the different perks and just overall my opinion on making the switch from console to PC gaming. Spoiler alert, it's probably the best decision I ever made in terms of video games and overall I could not recommend it enough. But I'm going to break this video up into different segments which I'll have time stamped in the description. The entire point of this video is to give you guys as much information as possible so you can make a good decision on how you want to spend your money. I'm not here to sell you on PC gaming. I'm just going to tell you why I think it's a great idea and why I'm really happy that I made the decision to switch over. I I think either way, if you want to go console or PC gaming, as long as you're playing the games you enjoy, that's all that matters at the end of the day. It's really not that deep. It's video games we're talking about, they're entertainment, it's meant to be fun, so play on whatever you want. But this video is for people who are considering it. Hopefully I can answer as many questions as possible that you have. There will be timestamps in the description, so go ahead and skip around if you're only interested in maybe one or two topics. The entire point of this video is to give you my experience with PC gaming from someone who is not, you could probably say, well versed on the technical side, definitely more of a casual PC gamer, which is kind of a viewpoint I feel like is lacking from a lot of YouTube channels. I feel like most of the YouTubers that talk about PC gaming come from a highly technical background, and I think they kind of do information overload to an extent, which I'm here to tell you, it's extremely easy. Don't worry about it. If you don't know how the components work, if you don't want to build your computer, that is perfectly fine. We're going to get into it. But the first thing I want to kick this video off with is probably the biggest thing and probably the biggest turnoff for a lot of people when it comes to PC gaming. Gaming, and that, of course, is the price. Now, I just want to make this clear in terms of price. I am not one of those people that makes the argument that a $500 PC can outperform a $500 console. I do not think that is even the case with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. These consoles are going to shit on a $500 PC, if we're being honest here. So if you're purely just looking for a machine to play video games on, you don't care about the customization of the experience, you don't care about getting higher frame rates or anything like that, or prioritizing frames over resolution, you just want to play video games, you want to spend $500, bucks, you are good, get a console. You're not going to find a better deal in terms terms of price to performance versus these next generation consoles for the time being and that's just the current state of the PC market but that comes with a huge caveat because I don't like the price comparison you are comparing a video game console that does one thing well actually two it's a streaming device and it plays video games okay that's it a PC does that and so much more like I could not live without my PC I could live without a console I do all my schoolwork on my PC I do video editing on my PC I do audio recording thumbnails I do my investments on my PC the functionality that a PC provides over a console is not even comparable. Sure, you can make the argument we're buying this for gaming and, you know, both play video games. That's true. But, you know, both a Ferrari and a fucking Honda Civic will drive you from point A to point B. But, you know, if you spend a little bit more, you're going to get a lot more enjoyment out of that ride. Let's just put it that way. And that's the way I look at the whole price comparison between console and PC gaming. On one hand, you have a machine that is purely meant for video games. It does that pretty well for the price. You know, it has a great accessible entry point. That's fine. PC gaming, on the other hand, is the natural evolution. It's for people who want to take that shit to the next level and experience gaming in its best possible form, or just elevate it a little bit above console gaming. Now, you may be wondering, what would be the price that you recommend spending on a PC? Now, this is a very controversial answer, and PC dudes get mad at me every single time I say it, but, you know, fuck it, man. <laughs> I really don't care. But I would recommend spending about $800 to $1,000 on a PC. If you can bump it up to $1,200, you are going to get a very solid machine that is going to last you for years to come that you are not going to have to upgrade, but you can 100% upgrade if you want to moving forward. And I think that's the right state you want to be in because when you're buying a PC, think of it as an investment. It's not like a console where, you know, every three or four years they come out with a new one and you have to like just basically throw out your old one and get a new one. Like PC is completely different. I'll give you the perfect example here. And this was something that I actually got shit for. I bought a 1000 watt platinum power supply with my PC originally, which at the time people were going to, that's overkill. You don't need to spend that much on a 
power supply. Well, now it's basically a necessity to run the graphics card that I just purchased. So if I would have bought a lesser one, I would have to throw that one out basically and then spend more money on the one I should have gotten originally. It's basically like saving money today to spend more tomorrow. So it's a really stupid false economy and I would not recommend it. Put as much money as you can into your PC up front, get quality components and it's going to pay off long term. That's my recommendation. But at the end of the day, the great thing about PC gaming is that the price is 100% determined by you. You have complete control over what components go into your build and you can make it as inexpensive or expensive as you want. But personally, I would recommend spending no less than $800 to $1,000 or, you know, maybe bump it up to $1,200 if you have that available. Like when I got my PC, it was before I was making money on YouTube really. So I had to save up for a couple years in order to get the PC that I wanted to. So, you know, just set a goal, stick to the goal, put some money aside periodically, like take some out of your paycheck every month for like one or two years. Because the great thing is these consoles are going to have support for last gen games for like probably a year or two at least. So, you know, just save up, get the PC that you really want to. And I think you're going to have a great experience, which brings us to the next topic and probably the most controversial topic within the PC gaming community. And that is whether you should build your computer or buy it. I am frequently accused of not being a quote unquote a real PC gamer, dude. And if that sounds cringe as fuck, it's because it is. Because I did not build my PC. I know, the horror. Can you believe it? Oh my god, he didn't build his PC. What a piece of shit, am I right? But it is 100% up to you. If you want to build it, that's great. You're probably going to save some money because you can hunt down deals on individual components. A lot of people seem to enjoy building PCs. You can look up tutorials. It'll probably take you an hour or two max. Like, it's not anything complicated and it's almost impossible to fuck it up unless you're one of those motherfuckers that rode the short bus straight off the side of a cliff, all right? I think you're gonna be fine. I have faith in you, but if you're like me and you're just lazy and you don't wanna build it yourself because you know you'll just get pissed off having to do cable management, you can buy your PC as well. I mean, it could be you're uncomfortable with building it. You just may not want to. Whatever the reason, you have the choice. Order from a build service. And I say a build service, not a pre-built. Like, don't order your PC off Best Buy or like Walmart or Amazon or something like that because chances are you're probably gonna get a computer with a bunch of shitty Chinese knockoff parts in them that'll crap out on you in six months. So I would definitely not recommend going that route. I would order from a reputable site, do some research. I think Cyber Power PC is pretty good. Origin PC as well. I used NZXT Build, which personally I really loved, you know, not sponsored by the way. Probably should have checked if they would have sponsored this video. I said that every single time that I make this video thinking about it now, but who knows, man, maybe I'll remember next year. But anyway, yeah, take it from somebody who has like, I guess you could say firsthand knowledge of the company. Like I love my PC. I would order from them again in a heartbeat. I'm really satisfied with it. They did a great job with my computer, so I can safely recommend them having spent thousands of dollars with them quite literally. So overall, I think if you do your research in either case, whether you decide to build or buy, I don't think you can go wrong. But, you know, don't let some cringy ass motherfucker on Reddit gatekeep you. Like for real, those motherfuckers have absolutely no lives that they are actually trying to gatekeep you and say you're not a real PC gamer because you didn't build your PC, bro. Like low key, I think they're just jealous they couldn't afford to pay somebody else to build it for them. I don't know, man. That's kind of just the vibe I pick up from all that shit. But that brings us to the next topic. Now, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. There is a pretty big learning curve between switching from controller to keyboard and mouse, especially with first-person shooters. But once you get it, man, I'm telling you, it is the most satisfying way to play video games ever. It feels like you're in control. Every single movement feels like your own. Whenever you aim, it feels like you're in complete control. You don't feel the effects of, like, the aim assist kick in versus if you're playing a shooter on console. I don't. It's much more satisfying. It's more immersive. It feels like you are the one controlling the game, not the game is controlling you. It's really hard to put... I don't really know how to describe it very well. Like, you really just have to experience it. And I'm going to be the first one to admit, I fucking sucked when I first tried to play shooters with keyboard and mouse after playing on controller for my entire life, because it's like muscle memory. It's like relearning how to ride a bike, but once you get it, man, you're good. You'll never want to go back to it either, because it is absolutely amazing. You just feel more free how fast you can move in games versus on console. Like, you can flick your mouse and turn around instantly. I don't know, man. It's a completely different experience. It changes the game completely, and it makes you feel like you are in control of the game you're playing, not the game is controlling you, and I feel like that's a big difference 
experience. And it's why I can never play another first person shooter on console. Like I have tried to play a first person shooter on console with a controller. It feels awful, dude. It feels like I'm drugged or something. It's so slow. It feels clunky as shit. And I'm aiming all over the place because I'm so used to the one-to-one -one accuracy of just pointing my mouse and clicking versus having to drag the thumbstick and wait for my cursor to go across the screen. So overall, once you get the hang of it, it's going to feel amazing. You're never going to want to go back, but there is that initial learning curve. Now for every other game other than shooters, I still use a controller. So you can hook up any controller you want on PC. If you like the PS4 controller, you can use that. If you like the PS5 controller, you can use that. If you like the Xbox One controller, you can use that. I use a 360 controller in 2020, bro. It's fucking awesome. And I love it. So you have whatever freedom you want to use any controller you want. You can even use the Switch Pro controller if you wanted to. So the option is yours. Almost every single game has native controller support. Call of Duty, for instance, like say you do want to play first person shooters with a controller, Call of Duty, the Master Chief Collection, those have like native console controller support. So it's the exact same controller experience that you get on console with the aim assist and everything, but you still get to take advantage of the higher FPS and better graphics as well. So it is literally the best of both worlds. And that's the great thing about PC gaming. You can do whatever the fuck you want to. So by far the thing I love most about PC gaming over console is the higher frame rates you can have on PC because on PC you can choose to prioritize the frame rates over the resolution. You can lower in-game settings to maybe give you like less textures or whatever you want to do in order to achieve a higher frame rate. Now of course in order to take advantage of this I would definitely recommend investing in a 144 hertz monitor so you can really get that full PC gaming experience because once you play a game at 144 hertz it is going to make you never want Want to play that game ever again on console it'll feel like a completely different game i always talk about destiny 2 i still think that's a great example the game is 30 fps on console and i play it at 144 fps on my pc and it is godly bro like it feels like a completely different game and recently i just invested in a 1440p 240 hertz monitor and from what i've played so far i can confirm it is a literal sexual experience dude like it is absolutely mind-blowing how fluid games feel but for that reason alone, I could definitely recommend you getting a PC. It just elevates every single video game you play. And regardless of what certain console fanboys will tell you, a quote unquote cinematic 30 FPS is complete garbage compared to higher frame rate you'll experience on PC. Once you play the same game at a higher frame rate versus 30 FPS on console, you will never want to go back. Like these motherfuckers are in denial because they don't know what they're missing out on. You know, they have to cope with the reality that games could play better on any platform other than their precious piece of plastic but a higher frame rate is the most noticeable difference between console and pc gaming and it's definitely the most important difference in my opinion and is the number one reason why i would recommend pc gaming over console video games just play and feel better So this is definitely a big one and it kind of helps with the whole price argument. I feel like if you're kind of on the fence, like, do I want to spend that much just to play video games? Well, think about it this way. As of right now, which I mean, this is always subject to change, but I don't really see it happening. And even if it does happen, you know, we're going to talk about it. But anyway, right now, video games are significantly cheaper on the PC versus PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Take Call of Duty Cold War, for example. The game is $70 on the next generation consoles. But if you want to get it on PC, it's only $60. And on top of that, you can take it a step further and go to a third-party key site and find a key for the game discounted even further, even as low as $50. So you're saving $20 on the price of a new release game versus the consoles. Like, that's a pretty big savings. And if you consider that for the entire generation, you could be looking at actually spending significantly more on your PC, but actually spending less in the long run because you're saving money on video games over time. And on top of that, you're not having to pay $60 a year just in order to play the online portion of your video games that you already paid for. Like, isn't that fucking insane, man? You know, playing the multiplayer portion of a video game that you literally just paid for without having to pay Microsoft and Sony an additional fee just for the privilege to play the video game you fucking own. Like, I genuinely have no idea how people put up with that shit in 2020. Oh, wait, you have no other choice because there is no other option on a console, which, I mean, let's just say that next generation games also do go up in price on PC. You still have the third party key sites that sell keys at a discount. They just take a cut out of their cut of the sale and pass the savings on to you. 
you and therefore they get more sales so they get more volume and they still make more money overall and you get to save money on the key so that's going to definitely offset the cost even if they do raise the price on next generation games for pc as well which i don't really see happening but who knows man the video game industry will take any opportunity to squeeze as much money out of you as humanly possible but it's definitely something to note video games on pc are going to be significantly cheaper at least in the short term for pc versus console and that can definitely offset the price of the pc versus the console if you really think about it that way just something to keep in mind But in conclusion, guys, switching to PC gaming is one of the best decisions I ever made personally, and honestly, I can't recommend it enough. The thing I would probably say I love the most about PC gaming, aside from the frame rates, is just the freedom you have, which, I mean, I guess that kind of goes hand in hand. You can cater the experience to be whatever you want it to be. You don't have some hardware manufacturer or a developer telling you this game can only be played at 1440p, 25 FPS, because it runs like complete shit on a console. Like, that's the nice thing. You you can cater the experience to be whatever you want it to be. If you want to lower the resolution to get more frames, you can do that. If you want to play the game at 4K and sacrifice on the frame rate, you can do that. You have the option. You don't have a company telling you how you should play the game. And on top of that, you can use any controller you want. You can use keyboard and mouse. Like motherfuckers use the Wii nunchucks on this shit. Like you can do whatever you want. And that's what I really love about PC. Like me personally, I have a three monitor setup. I have my game in the middle, got Discord open on my left screen and like you YouTube or Netflix on my right screen. I'm doing three things at once. Maybe I'll tab out and like do some homework, tab back into my game while I'm still watching something on YouTube, chatting on Discord. Like it's awesome. You can't do this type of shit on a console. And that's what I really love about it. You just have so much freedom. You can have your gaming experience however you want it to be. And that's something that you really can't put a price on in my opinion. Like I have just enjoyed gaming so much more ever since I got my computer. PC gaming allows you to play games how they're meant to be played and how games are meant to be played is however the fuck you want them to be played because you don't have a hardware manufacturer or the developer of the game saying well this game can only run at 4k 30 and even if you have a 1080p tv you still have to render the game at 4k and it just downscales it and you're still stuck at 30 fps like literally you have the option on pc to experience that game however the fuck you want it to be played and that's the beauty and that's what i don't think you can put a price on in my opinion because you just start to enjoy games so much more when you have that level of input that directly affects affects the experience that you have with the games that you love and to me that is well worth it in and of itself so if you have the means and you're interested I'd say go for it and even if you have to save up money that's perfectly fine like you have a year or two before like the cross-gen games stop like most games are still going to release on the current gen hardware so you have some time to decide save up some money and in the span of a year or two you could have a ton of money for a beast of a rig that's going to last you for like five or six years minimum especially if you get like a 3070 or a 3080 and they should be restocked at that point hopefully who the fuck knows man like nvidia completely butchered that launch but overall it's a really great time to consider getting into pc gaming and even if you decide to go with the consoles both of them are really solid choices i mean you know video games are meant to be fun spend your money on what you think is worthwhile i'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't buy i'm just here to give you some insight and let you know my experience surrounding the switch from console to pc gaming because i feel like a lot of the people who talk about it are super technical about it and i'm like coming at it from an extremely casual viewpoint in case you couldn't tell but overall really can't recommended enough. I know I've said that like 85 times throughout this video. You know, forgive me, but it's the God's honest truth, man. But if you guys enjoyed this video, you found it insightful, helpful, or whatever, feel free to drop a like on it. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people with some insight that could probably help you out. I'll try to answer some questions too if I have some free time, but I'm sure you'll get a reply. Like the PC community is one of the most helpful communities I've ever come across. So, you know, drop your comments, concerns, questions, whatever you want to ask. And I'm sure some Somebody will be happy to help you out and I'll try to get to some as well but with that said that is going to do it for this video today as always I want to thank you all so much for taking the time every day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well you guys are the fucking best man like I'm sorry I haven't been able to upload as frequently as I'd like to but you know college right now my grad school is literally just bending me over bro like we're in the middle of midterms right now and all of my professors decided you know what midterms aren't screwing them over enough so we need to assign them projects to be due the week of midterms as well because you know obviously 
hopefully they have so much free time to do that already. But, you know, it's a struggle, dude. I'm having to pull all-nighters just to upload. You know, that's that gamer lifestyle to pump out that quality content. So we do what we have to do to survive. The grind doesn't stop. But I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support recently. Like, this has been the best month in the history of my channel, even with this shit. So I really just can't thank you guys enough for that, dude. The support has been absolutely insane recently. So thank you all again so much for that. And I will catch you guys next time.